Rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born upon this day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. From God our Heavenly Father, that blessed angel came and unto certain shepherds brought tidings of the same. Hey, you know what? Let's have our middle school music right now because then they're going to go to Prestige Mira Loma and do uh, Christmas worship over there. So they need to get going. So uh, let's take it away, middle school.
to our middle school and now they all have to get going to uh, Prestige Mayor Loma, our assisted living Christmas worship. All the other youth that are going, you get to go now. You get to go now. And while they're going, we're going to sing. Let's sing the first Noel. Two verses.
time for the kids to come on up. Okay, okay, we just have a lot going on here. Take that one down. Oh, gotta get that over here. Okay, so we've been, uh, we've been making it look like Christmas around here, haven't we? And every week there's something more, we add more, we do more stuff. Today, though, it looks pretty much like it did last week. There's just a few things that are different. One is there's, there's all these uh, Christmas presents way around the corner, and you can't even see most of them because they're, they're behind the bikes and the, and the teddy bears. But those are presents for Lutheran Social Services, Christmas presents for kids. And we have a few more teddy bears and friends. But the one thing that is absolutely different is right beside me here. We have our blue candles for this month as we are doing a countdown towards Christmas. How many blue candles are burning? Three. So there's only one more to be lit before Christmas. So that means next Sunday we light all four. And that means Christmas is that week. Do you know what day Christmas is? That's Tuesday. It's a week from Tuesday, so it's coming up real soon. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we got, some, we got some people out there. Yeah, they're ready. We're ready for Christmas because it's coming soon. Now, we have given out candy canes, and we have our candy cane tree out there in the lobby. We've given out uh, Advent calendars and Seek and Find books. If you didn't get one of those, moms and dads, they're out on the devotional table out there. So if you still need one, didn't get one, grab one of those, okay? We need to get going to Sunday school, so let's pray. Dear Lord... Thank you for all these Christmas decorations and the candy cane tree and these Advent candles. Help us prepare to celebrate Jesus' birthday on Christmas. We pray through Jesus, our friend, our Lord, and our Savior. Amen. Okay, we've got stickers right down the aisle. Head off to Sunday school. We'll see you next time. And we have some guests who are here doing some work for us, actually. Come on up, you guys. When you came in, you may have seen some work going on out there uh, by the parking lot. So you guys, tell everybody who you are, what you're doing, okay? I'm Tyler, and this is... Uh... I'm Abel Lindley. I, we're, um, you may have seen us, we're constructing some fences and, and things like that outside. Uh, as you can tell, I got concrete all over me. <laughs> um, so we're trying to raise the money to build it. We want to go all the way down so we can get the fences all the way to the road and uh, build these, these paddings down there. So we need the um, funds to get the fencing and tiles and things like that and benches and uh, all kinds of stuff. Apart from the fences, we're also built, make, making pavers there to lead a path down there. And we have his fire pit is going to be there. And I'm going to have a little fountain there. And we're going to have plants along the front of the fences to continue that pattern that is already there. And a decorative rock would be everywhere and some Chinese privet trees from, that are being donated to us from Star and Moon Nursery. So yeah, we want to kind of not have to see into people's backyards anymore and have a nice area people can, can go from, from all over. So, uh, you know, any help is appreciated. Uh, why are you doing this? Uh, oh, we're doing it for our Eagle Project. Yeah, there uh, we go. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, we're sponsored by the church, or Death by the church, so. Should have mentioned that probably. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's an important part. So, uh, you, you know, we support scouts in a big way here at this church with all of the troops and the packs and everything that uh, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts. Uh, and so this is one of the ways we do it is by providing the opportunity for Eagle projects. And uh, two of them were already completed out there, and then they're doing two more, and that is really going to make that area look really nice. And it's always useful because I see people out there during the week all the time. They'll be there to, uh, you know, wait for someone to pick them up to go to work or things like that. Uh, we have some people that even ride their bikes, and they block them there, and then they get a ride to work. So it's, it's really for the community also. So if you can support by giving, you can give it into the box that's out in the lobby there, or you can just put it in the office 
offering. You can go to the office. Any way you want to, just designate uh, the Eagle Scout projects. And uh, when you're finished and you receive your Eagle Awards, we're going to want to celebrate with you again in here, okay? So they're going to be out there. If you want to stop by after worship, they'll still be out there until about noon today, okay? So thank you guys for, for your service. Thank you. Uh, please make note of all of those announcements in your bulletin. The most important things. One is next Sunday, Family Promise begins. We're hosting homeless families here at Christ the Servant for the week of Christmas. We always volunteer for the week of Christmas, one of the most difficult weeks to get volunteers for, but we decide we just absolutely need to do that. So that's our tradition. If you can help out, I think we still need some overnight hosts. Look at the poster out there in the lobby and sign up to be an overnight host. This is one of the best times of the year to do that because you get to be there with the families and the kids and it's Christmas and, and the kids are all excited and then they get presents and things like that. So it's really cool. Um, our Christmas Eve worship is at 2, 4, 6, and 8. They are all the same service. They're uh, Christmas carols, candle lighting, communion. So just choose the time that's going to work for you. Christmas morning, we have worship at 10 a.m. 30 minutes before every worship service, our band will be uh, singing Christmas carols. So you come early, get your place, and enjoy Christmas carols as you're getting ready for the worship service. So those are the announcements. Uh, Pastor Diane is with the middle school over at Prestige Miraloma, Assisted Living, doing a Christmas worship for them. So uh, she is here today. You just won't see her in this space. We'll continue now with our scripture readings. The prophet Zephaniah's message is mostly one of judgment for sin. This reading, however, comes from the, the conclusion of the book, it prophesies joy in Judah for Judah and Jerusalem. Judgment has led to repentance and God's salvation is at hand. Today's first reading is from Zephaniah chapter three, verses 14 through 20. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion, shout, O Israel, rejoice and exalt with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion, do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home, at the time when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth. When I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. We'll read from Isaiah chapter 12, verses two through six responsibly. Surely God is it my salvation. With joy, he will draw water from the wells of salvation. And you will say that day, give thanks to the Lord. Call on God's name. Make known the deeds of the Lord among the nations. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, who has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Despite being in prison, Paul is remarkably upbeat as he writes this letter. Here, he urges his friends in Philippi to trust God with all their worries and concerns, with the hope that they will experience God's joy and peace. Today's second reading is from the Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. 
The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Please stand. Gospel of Luke, the third chapter. John the Baptist said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? In reply he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusations, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. And also, uh, please welcome to our worship band on flute, Sherry Mundo. Thank you. I'm going to say something that you have already said. You already said it this morning. So repeat after me. I will trust and will not be afraid for the Lord God is my strength and my might and has become my salvation. Again, I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my might, and has become my salvation. That's how you should start out every day. That's how you should finish every day. And perhaps several times throughout the day, maybe you should speak it every day. Speak those words. Speak that message to yourself. Print it out. Put it where you'll see it. That's so important to tell yourself that message from the prophet Isaiah chapter 12. That's where that comes from. The prophet Zephaniah speaking to the people during difficult times. It wasn't good says, rejoice and exult, even if you don't have reason to, because you always do have reason to rejoice, and the reason is the Lord. 
Now specifically, it says, the Lord has taken away the judgments against you. Can you imagine going to court because you have been accused and the trial proceeds and you are pronounced guilty and then that judgment is taken away as if it never happened? Well, that would be a cause to rejoice. And that's kind of this idea that here. Any judgment made against you is gone. It's taken away. The Lord has taken it away from you. And because of the Lord, you shall fear disaster no more. We live in a time where we hear of disasters every day. Our news feed is filled with all the horrible things that happen, not only in our own communities, but on the other side of the world as well. If there are wildfires, we hear about it. If there's earthquake, we hear about it. If there's tsunami, even though we're in the driest desert, we hear about it. And all of these things will cause us to fear. Do not let your hands grow weak. I, I really like that because this week, I mean, look at my poor hands. I got this all taped up because my thumb injury and playing guitar and then yesterday I was cooking and I cut my finger yeah I like that I like that I, oh. I, I cut my finger it's just a little bit more than a paper cut but you realize this is the worst possible place to cut your finger if you're a guitar player because I'm holding my pick right where the cut is so every strum I feel pain but I do it for you So I have a real, I have a real good band, you know, one of those clear ones that really, really sticks there. But that's not what this scripture is saying. Do not let your hands grow weak. I think about, for example, a person, strong hands throughout their life, but then at, at, at some time in their life, arthritis strikes and takes away the ability to have strength in the hands anymore and no longer can do those things. And we're like that. The idea is that we become like those hands that, that can't grip anymore because we fear. And Zephaniah says, don't let that happen to you. Don't let your life be taken away from you because you fear. Even the Lord God in your midst will rejoice with loud singing. Anybody here like to, to, to sing loudly? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you, with, all, with our band up here, we have the microphones and we have these monitor speakers that, that are just shooting right up at us so we can hear ourselves. And I have my guitar amp right behind me so, I, so it's coming right so I can hear everything. And we rehearse, and it's great. And then we start singing glory to God in here. Can't hear a thing except you guys singing glory to God, which is the way it should be with loud singing. We even have some worship services where we have kids that sing at the top of their lungs. We get to that point, they just cut loose and they're singing as loudly as they can. And if you ever tell me, hey, tell them not to sing so loud, not gonna happen. Not gonna stop that kind of enthusiasm. You also know at the end of the service when we sing, we lift our voice, give glory to God, a lot of people go like this, you know, lifting, lifting our hands and doing that. We have some parents that throw their children in the air. Yes, they do, especially Saturday night. We get to that point and they throw their kids. One family, the kids are autistic. They're teenagers, so they're big. And still, they start jumping up and down with anticipation during that song because they want dad to throw them up in the air. And he does throw them up in the air. We even have a family now of uh, three generations, six people on Saturday night. We start singing, they all start holding hands because when they get to that point, they all go like this. That's singing loudly. That's rejoicing. That's exulting. That's what we do. You may not feel like it when you come here. You may not feel like singing. Maybe that's just not your thing. But then you are surrounded by the voices singing praise to God. And all worries start to melt away. At least for a time. And that's a good thing. Then in Philippians, St. Paul is writing to the church in Philippi. 
And that very famous verse that many of you know by heart, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Again, how do we sing here in church? Rejoice. rejoice. Yeah, yeah, that's how we always start. The two rejoices. The leader sings it, you echo it. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. You may not feel like rejoicing, but the reason you come here is to be reminded that that is what God gives us constantly, is reason to rejoice. And if you can't think of a reason, at least you can be here and share in the reasons that we proclaim week after week. Now, that's okay. We can follow that instruction. Maybe that's just saying or singing. But the next instruction could be the hardest one of all. And it's all assumed that because we know the Lord is our salvation, do not worry about anything. How many here follow that advice every single day? How many of you can make it through one day without worrying? Anybody? Bueller? There's Bueller right there. Okay, yeah. It's hard to do because we know why we should worry. There are so many things. We are barraged by worry every day, all day long. It's hard to escape it. And it seems that so many of the things that cause us worry are things over which we have no control. I know I do that too. And so when I'm worrying about something I have no control over, who does that hurt? Me. It makes no difference whatsoever except that it's hurting me. And we get sucked into that so much. Do not worry. And you say, okay, I, I won't worry about the little things. I'll save it for the big things. I'll worry about the big things. Well, the scripture doesn't say that. Go ahead and worry about the big things. It says don't worry about anything. Well, how do we not do that? Because it just happens to me. Doesn't it just happen to you? Sometimes you may not realize it, but then you're all of a sudden, it's like I'm consumed with th something. What is it? Well, I'm worried about my children. If you're worried about your children, guess what? Everyone worries about their children. That will never end. You're worried about your financial security. Again, guess what, folks? Everybody worries about their financial security. There's so many things that, yeah, if we stop and dwell on it, we will be paralyzed with worry. And worry then leads to fear, and fear prevents us from living. So what do we then do? Well, the solution is said, well, turn it over in prayer. And sometimes that's the first step that you need to take. Instead of trying to solve everything on your own, you turn it over to God first and say, Lord, I'm helpless. I invite you into my life to take this away from me. Now I pray that when you come here, you're able to spend at least some time where all of that melts away because you are surrounded by the good, gracious Lord who is your salvation. And we fill our worship service with so many things. Sometimes I wonder, do we try to put too much in our worship services? We do this song. Now we do another song. Now we're going to read here. Now we're going to announce. Now we're going to have kids. Now we're going to have a special song. Now we're going to do that. Now we're going to have communion. Now we have an offering. Now we're going to sing again. We're going to sing again. We're going to sing again. And I worry maybe that's too much. But then I also realize that something is going to speak to you when you're here. And I don't know necessarily what it's going to be for you this week or next week or the week after. Maybe it is a song. Maybe it's seeing kids kind of skipping down the aisle with joy after communion. 
Maybe it's hearing about scouts doing their work out there. Maybe that speaks to you. We don't know. But we pray that there's at least something that will always get your attention. And I know that happens because from time to time you'll tell me either after worship or later in the week or sometimes six months later someone will come to me and say, hey, remember when this happened in worship? And I think, wow, I sure didn't plan that, but the Holy Spirit did. And so I'm reassured that the Spirit is at work in this place, leading us to be able to leave our worries behind and rejoice. John the Baptist has crowds of people coming to him. Now last week we read in scripture about John the Baptist and he's a voice crying in the wilderness. He lives in the desert. He has that odd diet of locusts and honey. If you want to lose weight, try that diet. I'm sure you will lose weight if that's all you and we think, wow, what a strange character. And you've probably seen people like John the Baptist. Anyone who's been to a big university with, you know, student union and uh, public areas, there's always someone preaching at the top of their lungs. Or maybe I, I haven't been down to the Strip for many, many years, so I don't know what it's like anymore down there. But are there still people who will stand on the sidewalk and say, repent, you're all, there probably are. Do you ever go up to them and introduce yourself to them? Give them your phone number? No. Nope. You stay far away from those kind of people. Except here, John the Baptist is one of those kind of people, and the crowds are coming to him. And what he's doing is baptism of repentance. Telling the people, come out here and change your life. Repentance doesn't mean just say you're sorry. Repentance means turn around, stop going the wrong direction, and start going the right direction. And so to kind of act it out, what he's inviting those people to do is come out to the Jordan River, get washed in the river, then emerge from the river back into the promised land, just like your ancestors did for the first time generations before starting over, being washed new to live a new life, the baptism of repentance. And people were flocking to him for that opportunity to act it out, to live it out, to experience it. And so then the question is, okay, now we've started down the right path. How do we do it? What should we do? And John says some very simple things. None of this is rocket science. What should we do? Share. Is that news to anybody? Share. It's not a suggestion. It's a command. He says, you must share. Well, the tax collectors know they're in a different category. It's probably a little more complicated. And so they say, what should we do? And he says, don't collect more money than you should. Soldiers know they're a different category. They say, what should we do? And essentially, he says, be satisfied with your wages. Well, isn't that stuff you learn along the way? It's almost like He's, he's summarizing the Ten Commandments for each category of people, saying, live the right way. Live the way God intends you to live. That's how you go the right direction. Now, the baptism we experience is different from that. We don't have baptism for repentance. We have what John the Baptist said was going to happen by the one coming after him. You will be baptized with Holy Spirit and fire. You have been baptized with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is with you always. The Holy Spirit is with us now, guiding us and leading us and teaching us. And you have that Spirit in your life. Do you have fire in your life? Have you ever experienced being fired up? Have you ever felt that? Do you feel that every day? 
but you have it. Now, I know feelings, emotions are different from reality necessarily, but you are baptized with spirit and fire. So there is no need for worry. There is no fear. There is celebration. There is joy. Say it again. I will trust. Will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my might and has become my salvation. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for filling us with joy, for leading us in rejoicing. We lift up all churches that have difficulty in rejoicing. We ask that your spirit will guide them to sing your praises to a world that is in need. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we lift up nations that war and disasters cease. We lift up countries recovering from famines or earthquakes. We lift up people whose human rights have been violated. Give your spirit to those leaders of nations that they will strive to work for the good of all people. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we pray for this church, Christ the Servant, and Christ Love Presbyterian Church, and our Tamil language Indian Fellowship. Lead us to shine your light to a world in darkness. Lord, we give you praise. Hear the prayers of your people, O God, and in your mercy grant us all we need for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're going to sing another Christmas song. Stand up, walk around, greet each other with that peace of Christ. I like it. Well, 
continue with the offering, and uh, as we are receiving the offering, we're going to be singing Go Tell It on the Mountain, and uh, the words should be up on the screen. going to sing. together. Merciful God, you open wide your hand and satisfy the need of every living thing. You have set a feast before us. Open our hands to receive it. Open our hearts to embrace it. Open our lives to live it. Amen. Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. We're going to sing together our Lord's Prayer. assistance to come up and we, we invite everyone here to share in the sacrament we turn no one away I need five people to assist to see your purpose 
Please stand here. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Amen. Share that peace with each other. Greet four people, extra points for finding anyone who's dressed like it's Christmas. That would be me.